Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby here. It is, uh, what is today? It is December 5th, uh, Wednesday, December 5th, and I am embarking upon um, a journey to provide you guys regular uh, insight, regular talks via a live forum uh, about some of the strategies uh, that I employ, some of the things that I do. Uh, to uh, to get and stay fit. What's up, Kevin? Hey, Dina. Um, so uh, my my marketing, my brand manager, my partner, uh, in my social media and branding efforts, Tanache Huande of Brand to Business, and I sat down today and thought it'd be a good idea to give you guys uh, regular check-ins, regular um, check-ins where I give you guys um, strategies, where I give you guys. Uh, common sense approaches that I've used for 30 years <clears throat> to basically get where I'm at now. So uh, in this first session, I'm just going to talk to you guys. <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you guys about um, about some misconceptions out there, about um, some of the things that we fall prey to in terms of marketing. Uh, I try to keep it brief. Uh, it's the first one. I've actually been dreading this uh, this talk for the last couple hours, uh, doing my my daddy duties, dinner, and and picking up kids, and doing everything possible to avoid uh, talking. But um, you know, got to do what I got to do. Got to got to give back uh, to people who um, you know who love me, support me, who are there for me, and people that I can help. So uh, today, I want to go over just a few things that I think uh, will get your mindset right and get you ready um, for the holidays, but also ready to kind of begin, if you want to begin changing how you look at uh, being fit and being focused um, and changing uh, how you look at, at getting and being in shape. So uh, for those who don't know me, know me. Uh, I've been at this for a long, long time. I've been, I've been training um, and trying to get better and be fit for the better part of 30-something years. I'm 40, turned 46 this year. Played football in college. My background educationally is in finance, but I've been, I've been training myself, and I begun uh, this fitness profession uh, as far as being a, a fitness entrepreneur about five years ago, uh, officially. So, what's up, Matthew? Uh, what's up, big big Raymond? Uh, so today I'm going to go over kind of what I've learned and what I think uh, simplifies the process. I'm, you know, I'm faced, you know, all the time with people who either think um, it comes easy to me, think uh, I'm genetically predisposed to be in shape. People who have known me for a long time know that's not true. I grew up skinny. Uh, people who think uh, that I follow some crazy regimen as far as training and or diet, which I don't. Uh, I actually train less now than I ever have. I just train smarter. Uh, I still eat uh, things I enjoy. I eat, I just had hamburger and fries before I got on this video. Um, so, uh, I think if I begin to teach you guys some of the things that are um, foundational principles, it will help you, help you avoid all this nonsense out there, help you avoid all these pitfalls, all this frustration, and begin to um, to look at things the right way, all right? So, I think I'll just start with just talking about what I think uh, people should understand about being lean, right? So, the first thing... Um, is our bodies perform exactly the way they're supposed to perform. Our bodies uh, react predictably. Our bodies react to what we do to it, what we eat, how we move, exactly how they've been conditioned to uh, and evolved to perform. So nothing we do, uh, nothing our bodies do is, is by accident. In fact, if we think about it, if you really study it, it's an amazing uh, phenomenon how our bodies work. It's, it's amazing how it functions. And if we understand what things do to our body, um, there there really is no guessing. There really is no frustration because we know uh, what we're eating, what it's going to do, and why we're doing it. So uh, I think I'll go over I'll go over two concepts that I believe uh, will be long enough for this this first video, but was set up. Um, kind of all the follow-up videos that I talk about. So I think, first of all, people, you know, we don't we don't really understand what we're trying to do, right, when we try to lose weight, right? We just think of it as some number on a scale, and we, we understand kind of uh, 
just um, at a high level, we understand that if we exercise and we eat well or eat healthy or eat clean, whatever that means, that we will lose weight. But we never really know what that means. We never really know what we're trying to accomplish, right? Um, and so the first step is to understand exactly what we're trying to accomplish, right? And I, and I put it into three buckets, right? There's three kind of categorical ways of, of approaching fitness and health, right? And I put them in three buckets. The first bucket is just general health, general well-being, right? So if you go to a doctor and you ask him or her, um, what do I do to be more healthy, right? And they'll tell you uh, to move 30 minutes a day, to, to do some cardiovascular exercise, to get your heart rate up to a certain level. They'll ask you to eat a balanced meal, to eat fruits and vegetables, to avoid fatty foods, to avoid um, uh, eating large meals, all these things that are, that are meant to keep you generally healthy, right? Uh, I like to say that, that a doctor's main job is to make sure you don't die and make sure you don't sue them. So they're not really trying to get you to be a good athlete or get you to be sexy or look good naked. They're just trying to make sure that you uh, pass all your blood tests and don't die, right? So they're giving you general stuff that's going to keep you around, keep you healthy. Uh, that's the first category. The second category is if you're training to be uh, proficient at a certain sport, right? Um, maybe football or baseball or cycling or running. Uh, and how you eat and how you train is geared specifically toward being proficient and good at that sport, right? So those people will do things differently. They'll eat more carbs, for example. Uh, they'll do more, they'll train more often, right? And they'll work on more refined movements. They might avoid certain movements that might be uh, contradictory to what the sport they're playing. So they'll train and eat uh, specifically to be better at their sport. And in many instances, take football, for example, where being bigger is beneficial. Uh, you don't want to be lean. You don't necessarily want to have a six-pack. So if you and I are the, are the same strength and the same speed, but I'm 20 pounds heavier, heavier than you, with or without a six-pack, I have an advantage. So in football or basketball or baseball, it doesn't necessarily behoove you to have a six-pack and be lean. You're just trying to be strong and, and big and fast. So that's the second category. The third category is what most people are seeking to accomplish, right? And that's to, to basically look good naked, look good in your clothes, look good um, when you're walking on the beach, right? And that category is different than both of the other two categories, right? For example, uh, eating fruits too often or the wrong times, the high sugar content can prevent you from burning body fat, right? Fasting will help you tap into fat stores, and I'll get into that if not today in future videos, but intermittent fasting will help you get rid of body fat more effectively. But if you're training as an athlete and you go every day to work on your fastball or, or to work on your, your route running or passing, uh, you, need, you need energy and fuel to do that. And so having carbohydrates in those instances helps you as an athlete. If you are a person who's just trying to be healthy, eating well-balanced meals throughout the day um, might be better for your heart and for your everything else, but it might not make you look the best um, when you go to the beach, right? So the first step is to understand what you're trying to accomplish um, and then approach your strategy with that in mind, right? And it might be a combination of, 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 of one, two, or three of those areas. And then you have to figure out like, how do I make two of them work for me? How do I make them all work for me uh, when, within my strategy? So that's the first step, is knowing exactly what you're trying to accomplish. For me, you know, I'm 46 now, so I'm not necessarily trying to be as, as fast or as strong as I used to want to be when I was playing football, for example. So I don't need to lift as heavy as often. Right? I don't need to do as crazy training in my sprints and all that. I still do it because I enjoy being able to do things that I could do when I was in my 20s. Uh, but I don't need to do it. So uh, because I'm busier right, with, with, with the wife and kids and, and the business and obligations, it's, I'm lucky that I, I, I realize now that I don't have to do as much to look athletic, even though I still can't, I, I can't run as fast or jump as high because I don't train the way I once trained. So I understand that. So I still do um, 
some of the things I used to do, just not as often, and I do it at the right times and right intervals when my body can respond the right way to that stuff, all right? So n number one is knowing what you're trying to do, okay? Number two is, is, and this is really important, is knowing exactly what you're doing and what it's accomplishing, right? Many people, they'll, they'll come to me and they'll say, I'm trying to burn off the food I ate or I'm trying to get ready for something. And so I'm working out for that. But they don't understand in the moment what they're actually doing. So I try to teach people to understand uh, exactly what every part of their strategy is meant to accomplish, right? If you eat carbs right now, what is that meant to accomplish? If you are fasting right now, what is that meant to accomplish? If you are training right now, doing a high intensity training or doing weightlifting or doing cardio, what is that meant to accomplish, right? And people who are prepare, preparing for bodybuilding shows or preparing for uh, fitness com competitions, they understand better than anybody what every part of that journey is meant to accomplish, right? What the six meals a day is meant to accomplish, what the cutting carbs is meant to accomplish. So many people don't get that. They don't understand why they're doing cardio. They don't understand why they have to get up and train. They don't understand why they should have uh, carbs before a workout or after a workout and why they should not have it between workouts, why they should have protein after, after a workout, what protein does, what carbs do. So once you understand some of that, that makes the strategy make more sense to you. Right, because if you don't do that, then you're doing things. Oftentimes, more times than not, to be honest, that are not only not helping you, but are, in many instances are hurting you. Right. So I'll I'll give you a few key points to that end as well, uh, in hopes that that as we begin this this dialogue, you you'll learn more and more. So one of the things, so I went over, you know, the first step is making sure that we know what we're trying to accomplish. Right, be healthy. That's one thing. Be an athlete and training for a sport. That's one thing. And then trying to actually look better, be leaner, uh, have more muscle mass, have less body fat. That's another thing altogether. All right. So it's three categories. Once you do that, now we're trying to figure out in every day what's going on. Right. And so this whole notion of calorie burning is is it's not a myth you know a calorie is a real thing it's it's a it's it's a real unit of 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 measure that are, that scientists have have determined um that that you can use to quantify expenditure of energy and fueling or eating of energy right so all calorie means is a unit of energy right the way i try to think of it um uh for many reasons but one reason is is and studies show that the box that says how many calories are in that rice or that donut or that broccoli, whatever it is, can be off by 10, 15, 20%. And the watches we use and the monitors we use to measure um, how much fuel or calories we burn can be off by 10, 20% as well. So if we're measuring something that we're entering in our body and that's incorrect, and we're using an equally um, uh, full of error measure for the expenditure of calories, then that, that whole notion of trying to compare the two can be uh, an exercise in frustration. So I try to think of it in terms of just fuel and common sense. And so what what we have to have to understand is that we burn fuel uh, one of four ways. So our bodies are always burning energy, right? So it's basically a matter of us, of us trying to expend more energy than we enter into our body, right? I'll get into it more as we go along about the times that we expend energy and 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 enter or, or, or eat energy uh, is as important. But for now, that's a simple equation. We're trying to, if we're trying to lose weight, lose body fat, we're trying to expend more energy than we take in. And it's important to understand that why, uh, how we, the four ways that we expend energy, all right? So I'm going to give it to you. What's up, Jamal? Oh, old school. What's up, Jamal? Oh, number four. Uh, so our bodies our bodies expend energy in four ways, right? I'm going to give them to you in order of intensity, right? What, what at, at a rate per second of expended energy, I'm going to give you the four ways our bodies burn fuel, burn calories, 
it's, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like the C word, but burn calories in order. So number one is deliberate exercise. So you burn the most fuel, which is obvious, right? You burn the most fuel uh, through deliberate exercise. That's weightlifting, that's running, cardiovascular work, that's intermittent, I'm sorry, that's high intensity training. Uh, deliberate exercise, obviously, burns the most fuel per unit of time, right? Right behind that is any recovery required by our body after a workout, after deliberate exercise. So, so it's called EPOC, you know, afterburn, but basically the, the scientific acronym is EPOC, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, EPOC. That is what happens to your body after you've done a vigorous workout, high intensity training that makes your body have to recover uh, oxygen that it couldn't get during a workout. If you've done some weight training, your body has to rebuild muscle tissue. So if you've done if you've done the deliberate exercise right, then there's some time after that where your body has to recover. That is the second tier of of fuel usage at a unit per time basis, right? So that's right below deliberate exercise. Right below that is any any additional active lifestyle you might have, right? Are you a person who walks the stairs at work? Are you a person who parks far away from the front door at the department store? Are you a person that does yard work? Are, do you carry your own stuff? Do you do things around the house that make you expend more energy than an average person? Do you get up from your desk at work and walk around? Uh, so if you're more active, then, you're, then, you're, then your daily life will expend more fuel. That's number three. And then the least um, uh, vigorous or the least um, quantifiable or, or high, a lowest rate of, of fuel expenditure per unit of time is just being sedentary. That's the least, right? Now, unfortunately, the percentage of time we spend in those four categories is inversely, it's inverse. So we spend most of our time being sedentary, sleeping, sitting, watching television, right? We spend the, the second least amount of time doing, doing active stuff, getting up, going to the refrigerator, getting up, you know, walking from our car to our office, walking from our desk to the bathroom, whatever it is. That's the second least. The third least, obviously, is any recovery from workouts. And then the least amount of time we spend in 24 hours a day, in every week, and every month, every year, the least amount of time we spend is doing deliberate exercise. So I say that because it behooves us to make sure that the bulk of our time, which is spent doing nothing, has at as high a rate of, of fuel burning as possible. That's why weightlifting is important. That's why building lean muscle mass is important, to make sure that we have a body that aids us in this fuel burning. Right? Our bodies burn fuel 24-7. So if only a small part of that is done doing deliberate exercise, we have to make sure that what, we, what our bodies do the other 23 hours of every day, right? if we do a, a, a training every day, is spent... At, at, at as high a level of fuel burning as possible. So weightlift, weightlifting has to be a part of your regimen. It has to be a part of your regimen to make sure that you're building an asset that allows your body to have a high BMR, basal metabolic rate, a high metabolism to help you get rid of fuel. All right, so, so now why is that important, right? So I'll, I'll leave with this last concept. So the, so the three concepts today that I've gone over are number one, know what you're trying to accomplish, right? For most of us, it's not just general fitness. If it was, we wouldn't be trying to get six pack abs. Most of us aren't still playing a sport. Some of us golf or play basketball on the weekends. So some of our training might be geared toward being better at that. Uh, but for the most part, most of us are trying to look better, to be leaner, to lose weight, to feel better in our clothes. So knowing what you're trying to accomplish is the first step. Uh, the second step is understanding um, how our bodies work in terms of getting rid of fuel and knowing that we have to make sure our bodies aid the process of getting rid of, rid of fuel, right? Getting rid of, of energy, getting rid of food that we eat, the energy it creates, right? And if we only think about it in terms of exercise, we get frustrated, right? Not enough time in the day to work out enough to, to get rid of all the fuel that we put in our body. So we have to understand the four different ways our bodies get rid of fuel, all right? So then the last piece, really, and I and this is a multi, 
uh, lecture, motai. I could talk for hours about this, and people in my class know I, I often do. Uh, but I'm going to leave you with maybe the most important principle in terms of, of, of losing body fat, right? And that is that, our, again, our bodies, are, our bodies work exactly as they're supposed to work, right? We've evolved over thousands of years, right, like all animals do, and we've, we've, we've survived through natural selection because our bodies have, have been designed to work to survive in a state, in, a, in an atmosphere, in an environment that has only changed in the last 200, 300 years. So our bodies work predictably. We just choose to ignore all the facts because we want to have fun and enjoy ourselves. So the fact of the matter is our bodies work as they're supposed to work and our bodies, whether it's fat storage or fat burning, are controlled by the same lever. Right, and that lever is glucose and glycogen. Right, I call it the G tank. I need to get it patented because that's my term. But it's it's our bodies, our bodies act predictably based on how much stored or or available glucose and glycogen it has. Right, so I call it the G tank. So when we eat carbohydrates, right, our body produces or creates glucose. It breaks down the bread or rice or cereal that we have into what's called glucose, right? Our body then uses the glucose as its primary use of fuel. Think of a car that can be a hybrid vehicle. So gasoline is the equivalent of glucose. So our bodies use that to do everything, not only to work out and to run, but to think, to study, to walk, to, to, to breathe. Our bodies run, for the most part, on glucose. Right. So when we eat, you know, again, a donut, bread, whatever, our bodies break down that that carbohydrate into glucose. Our body, if it's needed, will use that glucose. Unfortunately, we oftentimes give our body much more than it needs, not only at that at that time, but in an hour, two, three, four hour span. So when our body cannot use the immediately available glucose, it stores it right, for later use. It stores it in your muscles and your liver, right? That's why guys who have bigger muscles can store more can store more glycogen. So when they get rid of it, they can lose weight faster. I'll get, I'll get to that in a moment. So um, again, so when we eat excess glucose, our body will store that, that glucose as glycogen in our muscle and our liver. So the problem is, because we don't tap into and use often enough the glucose and glycogen in our body, we store it as body fat, okay? Because once our capacity to store glucose is full, right? Imagine, I use the analogy of, of a kitchen cabinet. So the countertop, or kitchen, the countertop is the, is the available, uh, what's up Mike? Is the available glucose. So as soon as you eat that bread or that donut or that rice, your body breaks it down into glucose and puts it on the countertop. If you're not using that, Right here comes your 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 wife or husband, uh, Miss Miss Insulin or Mister Insulin, and gets rid of that glucose and stores it right in the cabinets in your kitchen, i.e. your muscle and liver. Once that gets full, your body has no recourse other than to begin to create fat cells or to begin to to fill up previously created fat cells. So that's how your body stores body fat. So the the lever that 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 tells your body to store body fat has been around for thousands of years right unfortunately you know prior to about 300 years ago we we didn't do that regularly we didn't we didn't fill up our stores regularly and when we did there was going to be a period coming up soon that required us to tap into that stored that stored uh, energy right now we don't do that. Now we, we fill up on storage every single day, every week, every month. And we very seldom, if ever, tap into that, that storage because we're giving it new inventory, new glucose to feed upon uh, every day, several times a day. So that's how our bodies work. Our bodies, our bodies take in carbohydrate, break it down to glucose. When it's not using the glucose, it stores it as, 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 as glycogen in our muscle and liver. When there's no room to store it, it stores it as body fat. All right? That's how it works. So how do we reverse that? How do we switch that? Well, the only the only way to do that is to do what our bodies were meant to and designed to do. And that is 
get rid of all of the available glucose first. That's what working out does for the most part. Then make your body use up all the stored glycogen, right? The glycogen in your muscle and your livers. That's done via exercise. That's done via, via fasting, right? Not letting your body have any more glucose to store, right? Only when your body has gotten rid of all available glucose, right? Free floating in the bloodstream and stored in the muscle and liver. Only then will your body begin to tap into body fat. Right? So the problem is many people equate weight loss with fat loss. Right? That's not correct. That's not, not the same thing. And unfortunately, most di diets, most programs are geared toward making you lose glycogen and water. Right? Your body must use water to store glycogen. So when you go on a, a low-carb diet or fast or, or begin to up your output of of energy via exercise, your body will tap in. Well, well it, it'll, it'll first use up the glucose in your bloodstream. It will then tap into all your stored glycogen, right? So what happens is many people when they go on this this um, uh, uh, what's the surplus when, deficit of glycogen, right? You're using up more glycogen than you're bringing in. They lose stored glycogen and they lose water. Your body uses that up quickly. The bloodstream glucose for sure but your body can use up muscle and liver glycogen relatively quickly, especially if you're exercising and intermittent fasting. So that process is fast, 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 uh, uh, relatively fast, right? Guys, that's why guys who have big muscles can lose, you know, three, four, five, six pounds in a week, up to, you know, I, I, can, use, I can lose four or five, six pounds over a weekend if I fast and I work out correctly uh, because I have more muscle to store glycogen. Right, and so when it's stored, when I work out and get rid of it, my body gets rid of the glycogen and the water, and so I can lose weight, right? But for the most part, those changes within that window are all just window shopping, window dressing. They're not really important. It's just water and glycogen, both directions. When you gain weight, oftentimes that's just water and glycogen. When you lose weight, oftentimes it's water and glycogen. So the only po only point of emphasis is the is the two endpoints of that, whatever your range is. And we'll get into how to how to watch that, how to figure out what your range is, what your capacity to store glycogen is. But the the point I'm trying to make is that our bodies act predictably. Right when we eat, when we overeat or overconsume glucose and glycogen, our bodies have no other recourse than to almost immediately begin to store fat, right? So when you, when, you, when you go into your Thanksgiving meal or your Christmas meal or your anniversary and you're, and you're consuming large amounts of glucose and you're not doing anything to make your body use it, you begin to store body fat. Body fat that I'll get into in just one second is very, very hard to get rid of. Not very hard, but it's challenging. And most of us don't want to do the steps necessary to do that, right? Uh, so the, the flip side is, is also true, that once you empty out your body's available glucose and glycogen, once that G tank, I call it, is empty, now your body has to convert body fat into energy. And that's what we want, right? The problem is that first part is relatively quick, right? When you stop eating or you go low carb or no carb and fasting and you start going doing P90X or, or Insanity or, or UMC boot camp every day and you and you increase your output tremendously and then you turn around and decrease your input, you lose glycogen and water relatively quickly. So you're excited, right? Then once that's gone, once your body has gotten rid of and used up all the stored glycogen, your body begins to oxidize body fat, which is what you want to do. The problem is that is a slower process. Right, and once people get to that point, right, they've been on Instagram and Facebook sharing the, you know, their journey. You know, I'm down two pounds. I'm down three pounds. I'm excited. Um, once that process slows, and they can't put on Instagram, they lost any more weight. Now they might have gained a pound, or or they're the same weight. Now they get frustrated. And and after you've been eating broccoli and chicken breast for for two weeks or a week and a half. And, and it was easy when you were seeing results. Now, you're not seeing that scale change. You begin to get frustrated. You think you plateaued. You tell everybody that you're stuck. You're not stuck. Your body is meant to do that. 
now it must oxidize body fat, right? In a, in a historical setting, your body was starving. You were in a desert somewhere and your body had to tap into body fat stores, right? You were walking somewhere. You were not likely doing any vigorous activity for most of that day. So your body had ample opportunity to begin to oxidize body fat. So that's what must take place in order for you to begin to oxidize body fat, okay? And the problem is, when you get to that point, you can't, you can't really rush that process. If your body has no more uh, glycogen or glucose, and you're not taking an exogenous ketone supplement like I do, which I'll get into later, if you don't have that, your body can't produce the, the, the energy quick enough for you to be doing intense exercise. So once you've gotten your body rid of glycogen and glucose uh, via exercise, via fasting, you, you can't rush that next step of the process. That's why you see bodybuilders when you get ready for a show. When they've done their work in, in the kitchen and with their diet and, and, they're, and they're depleted of glycogen, you won't see bodybuilders typically doing any high-intensity aerobic training. You'll see them walking on a treadmill for an hour or two because they understand that they can't rush the process of fat oxidation, right? And if they try to do that, their body will oftentimes rob amino acids, rob um, all these things, rob muscle from the, um, uh, uh, as fuel. So they'll rob that stuff as fuel. And so uh, once we get to that point, we can't get frustrated. We, we should be excited because now once that scale stops moving, now we're burning body fat. That's a slower process, but that's where we want to be, okay? And the good news about that is we don't have to stay there, right? Most people think in terms of, uh, you know, I'm losing weight, right? This whole, uh, this whole idea of weight is, is almost comical because what do you weigh right now? What do you weigh, Kevin? What do you weigh, Rose? What do you weigh, Deanna? Right? It's, like, it's not a number. You, it's a range. and you don't, you don't weigh anything, right? It's like every day you get up, uh, your weight is, is you naked. And then I put a, a, a clothes on you, a jacket, shoes, and that's what you weigh now. So your weight is always different, right? You store more water some days, you just ate, you didn't go to the bathroom yet. All these things can change what your weight is, right? If you're a woman, you might, it might be menstrual time. All these things impact your hormonal, they impact what your weight is. So all we care about really is what our lean muscle mass is and our body fat. Now I get it, the scale allows us to predict when, and when we can eat, where our, our G tank levels are at. But this whole notion of, of weight is, is, is mentally challenging, right? And I, and I say that because what happens is if we do things right and we allow our body to get rid of all the glycogen. What's up, MJ? All the glycogen out of our body. Let's say we, we're, very, we're very meticulous and we're, we're, we're dedicated, we're disciplined. We joined Bobby's boot camp. We've been, we've been training, we've been eating right, and we've lost eight pounds. And let's say that we actually did it the right way, the way I'll recommend later, um, we did it the right way, and now all the glycogen in our body is gone, right? So now we're at a point where our body begins to produce ketone bodies, right? When your body's rid of glycogen and glucose, your body begins to oxidize body fat and create what's called ketone bodies. That's what the ketogenic diet is meant to do. Get your body in a state of ketosis where it's regularly oxidizing or converting body fat into energy. That's perfect. The problem is we can't stay there. It's impossible to stay there. Impossible. I mean, impossible, but it's hard. If you have kids, if you have friends, if you have fun, if you watch, if you go to a bar, you want, it's impossible. So what happens is when we get to a point, I lost 10 pounds, we want to stay there, right? And I'm telling you, if you do it the right way and you ever get to the point where you're rid of, of, of all your glycogen, that's impossible to stay there right? The beauty of it is we don't have to stay there, right? All we have to worry about is, number one, never letting our body get full of glycogen, right? Where we force it to store body fat. Never do that. Ever. Our bodies aren't meant to do that unless it's a severe situation, which we never, we should never be in. Our, our ancestors were never in. So we have to conduct ourselves with the mindset that I'm never going to let my body fill up on glycogen, ever, 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 ever. Like, I'm convinced that unless I get into an accident, God forbid, I will never in my life again gain body fat. Ever. 
and I just had hamburger and fries, right? I have cake, I have cookies, all those things. People, people, people who follow me or know me, they know I got my times where I eat, I can eat eight donuts in one sitting, right? But I do it at a time when my G tank is low and I know there's no risk of fat storage, right? We don't get fat from eating fat. We get fat from our body having to store energy, right? So if your body is, is, is in a state where it does not need to store in body fat energy, it won't do it, right? So we have to get to a point where we, we, are, we are unwilling to allow our body to ever, 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 ever again store body fat. It can be done. I'll show you guys when I'm done here. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you guys to to sign up for my my ebook on on fat burning uh, and building lean muscle mass. But we don't have to do that. We don't have to. I mean, I have fun. We don't have to store body fat, right? And nobody's worth that. Nobody in my life, nobody in your life is worth storing body fat that for many people you're never gonna get off. All right. So that's step one. Step two, and the and the beauty of it is, we don't have to stay continuously in fat burning mode. Right? If you're never ever gonna store body fat again, if you just regularly, whether it's weekly, monthly, uh, hopefully at least monthly, but if it's if it's a few times a week, if you go into fat burning mode regularly, like a few times a week, right, you will lose weight over time. You will lose fat, more importantly, over time. And if you never ever gain fat again, eventually you'll be in a state where your body is where it's at, where you want it to be, and you will continue to burn body fat. And you will continue to be lean and strong and have muscle and have energy, right? But you have to first commit to never letting your body get full on glycogen, right? How, how do you do that? Well, you make sure you exercise, you make sure you work out, you make sure you don't eat um, uh, too many back to back to back to back large input glycogen meals don't fill up too often um and then when you're trying to to change your body composition make sure via working out via intermittent fasting that you regularly empty out your glycogen and go some time interval maybe it's a day half a day um even two days where your body has no glycogen and is forced to oxidize body fat ideally at a time when you're not working out right so it's this notion that you have to, you know, bust your ass in the gym um, and starve yourself all the time is not correct, right? People know me, uh, you know, people, what's up, Jordan? Jordan's known me for 25 years, went to college with Jordan. Uh, MJ has known me for 25 years, went to college with him. So I've been doing this for a long time, and I've eaten, I've never been on, been on a diet. I've never uh, not eaten certain things. I don't, I don't suggest people avoid certain things. You know, you don't have to avoid anything, right? You just have to know when and how to eat. You have to know that if I'm going to a dinner party on Thursday night, I can't go to lunch and breakfast with my friends on Thursday morning and afternoon, right? If I'm going away for the weekend, I can't skip my Friday workout going into the weekend. I can't go into the weekend with my, with my, my G tank already half full, Right, then go to Tahoe, stop at, at Roseville, have have pizza, then go to Tahoe and have breakfast, lunch, and dinner for two days, and then come back and ask my trainer to help me burn off all this all this weight that I gained. Because by then it's too late, right? I'll I'll burn off some of the glycogen stored, but if you filled up on glycogen while you're at Tahoe having fun, your body began almost immediate fat storage, right? So we have to avoid that at all costs. We have to avoid that at all costs. Um, so. Um, Again, I'll kind of go over the bullet points from today. Uh, I can talk forever about this stuff because it's, it's important to me to make sure people begin to understand how simple it is. It's not easy, um, but it's simple. We're not meant as, as animals, as human beings, to live the way we live, right? So if we just make some minor changes in how we, in how we strategize our lives, then the body you want, the health you want, whatever you want is, is not only possible, uh, but it's probable if you do it right, right? So the concepts I went over today, again, was knowing what you're trying to accomplish, right? Are you just doing it for health? In that case, just eat small meals, eat fruits and vegetables, you know, walk every day, whatever. If you're doing it for a sport, then make sure you do your, you, you have your carbs at the right time, you train correctly uh, to get stronger, bigger, faster. If you're trying to get lean, Right, trying to get sexy, trying to look good at the beach, that approach is different than the other two. 
right? And we'll get more into that later. That might involve some intermittent fasting. That might involve uh, some high intensity training. That might involve um, things that you wouldn't do if you were just trying to be healthy or trying to be an athlete, right? And then it's just figuring out or understanding how important it is that we understand what every part of the strategy does, right? What does the training do? Right. Why is it important to train hard? Why? Because we want that, that afterburn effect. We want our body to be in burning mode after the workout. Why is it important to have active lifestyle, to burn more fuel, to walk to your, to get up from your desk every once in a while, to park far away from the, from the, from the department store, to do all those things, to do laundry, to walk the stairs at your house, to get up every once in a while. All those things are important. And then to know that most of our day is spent sedentary. What's up, Kelvin? Kelvin's known me even longer since high school. So uh, to know what's important, it, it's important to know that, that most of our, our day is spent sedentary. So having muscle, having lean muscle, aids your body in burning fuel. So for all those guys who just think cardio is king, right, building lean muscle might be your best asset, right? And then the last piece that I talked about today was basically understanding how the lever works. It's the same lever for fat burning and fat storing. Right, and that's our G tank, our collective glucose and glycogen levels. We have to control that at all costs. We can never allow our body to get full on glycogen, right? Because when that happens, what happens? Our body stores body fat. And then, in order to change long term wise what our bodies look like, we have to regularly strategize so that we regularly put our body into a state where it has no more glycogen to draw upon and it's forced to burn body fat. Right? The good news, again, is that we don't have to stay there forever. We can go in and out of that state. Right, Burn out all our glycogen via exercise, via intermittent fasting. Let our body burn body fat for a day, for a few hours, and then come back a little bit. Never going up to the top on our capacity to store glycogen, but coming down to the bottom every once in a while. And if you do that regularly, burning fat is easy, guys. Burning, no, sorry. Burning fat is simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Uh, so I hope that's been helpful. Um, again, I was ner I was nervous, uh, but I did it. We got it done. Uh, I want you guys to swipe up. I think it's swipe up. Uh, I have an ebook on on building lean muscle and burning body fat. I'm gonna have more coming out. It's the holidays now, guys. It's December fifth. Um, there's no excuse. We can't we can't allow any parties, any fun to get in the way of what we know we are as human beings, right? We're strong, uh, we're strong, tough-minded uh, people that people around us look up to and depend on. So no party, no event is worth us changing our mindset, right? I'm not saying don't go to parties, right? I'm not saying don't have that big-ass plate at Christmas. What I am saying is that if we do that, plan for it. Right, before you go work out, before you go fast, before you go reduce your carbohydrate intake. So that when you do that, you're not putting your body at risk of fat storage. Again, because if we do that, for many, many people, that's fat that might never come off your body. And nobody's worth that. All right? So swipe up, guys, to get my ebook um, on burning fat, on, on building lean muscle. And I look forward to doing this often, several times a week, um, in hopes that I can help you guys. Uh, get better every single day moving toward the goals that you want. All right, guys. Have a good night. I will talk to you soon. Love you guys. Bye.